Uh, first of all, congratulations, students. Uh, this has been one heck of a semester. It's been one heck of a career for you here at NYMC. You've, you've uh, gotten through it. Uh, and so congratulations. We're, as Dr. Ansel said, we're thrilled. To, we're excited to hear about your, uh, your work here. A lot of hard work, but this is what uh, life is like in public health, uh, where you do a lot of, uh, of, of collaborative types of work and uh, group work. I also want to thank uh, your instructor, uh, Dr. Michael Shikarjian, and uh, Professor uh, Patrick Lee. Uh, the work that these guys have had to do is just enormous. And, and it's not just during this semester, but this has been leading up, you know, several months leading up to it. So uh, good job, Michael and Patrick, and thank you all for your help. So I would like to uh, welcome Dean Amler. I see that he is uh, here. Uh, uh, Dean, would you have a, f a few words of, uh, uh, I, I know you talked to him earlier, but uh, anything, uh, anything else you're welcome to say? Well, this is really an exciting evening. Everybody's prepared, everybody's excited. I see a lot of our faculty have joined and a special shout out to the Children's Environmental Health Center of the Hudson Valley. Uh, Dr. Ansel is on. I see that uh, Diane Lindsay Adler is on and uh, a number of others. So it's really great. This is a clinical service that actually provides uh, uh, expert evaluations of children with various types of environmental exposures and makes recommendations for testing, evaluation, uh, mitigation of their exposures, and sometimes even direct treatments. So this is a, um, a newly expanded feature and uh, Without Dr. Ansel, Diane Lindsay Adler, let's see, am I missing anyone else? Is anyone else on the call? I'd only look at faces, uh, but uh, without them, uh, we would not be able to do this. So thanks for joining the capstone. I'm really excited to hear the presentations. And uh, as always, it's a privilege to be your Dean and best of luck. Hope to see you at virtual graduation very soon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dean Ambler. And just a quick note that we are having a virtual celebration among public health students. I think I just sent emails out to all those graduates. Uh, so we hope to see you there as well. So with no further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Michael Shikarjian, uh, 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 the, uh, the instructor for the class, and also Patrick Lee, who uh, has served an invaluable service to the class as well. So thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much, Dr. Kittleson, and thank you, Dean Amler. Uh, oh, and I also see that uh, Dr. Amy Brown from the Children's Environmental Health Center is with us uh, this, this evening. Um, and so it's my privilege, uh, along with um, my colleague, Professor Patrick Lee, to introduce the 2021 Environmental Health Capstone team with their uh, presentation, Live Together, Grow Together, a Community Garden Blueprint for Westchester County. And um, Bonnie Welch will start off the presentation. Bonnie? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation, Live Together, Grow Together, a Community Garden Blueprint for Westchester County, presented by the 2021 New York Medical College Environmental Health Sciences Capstone Class, which is led by Dr. Michael Shikarjan and Professor Patrick Lee. Tonight's presenters are... Imano Akoto. I'm the Bagali. We had the Johanny. What has Sulami? We had a Sawa. Sarah Altwaited. Cardi does a honey. Rami of water. Amir Brzimkic. Derek Hunt. Cash the target. Stephanie Yen. Irene Telfero. Osvaldo Rodriguez. Irene Taliaferro. Narendra Tiwari. Annie Welch. Mylon Yakic. Our presentation tonight will cover a brief history of community gardens the needs in Westchester County, the benefits of a community garden, the variety of garden options, our recommendations for the county, 
the results of our feasibility study, and the educational opportunities associated with the garden. Oswaldo will now share with you our project scope statement. Thank you, Bonnie. By May 4, the New York Medical College 2021 Environmental Health Science Capstone students will design a blueprint for a community garden at, a, at the Westchester County Grassland Campus. The garden will be completely operated through the partnership of nonprofit organizations, volunteers, and staff. The goal is to organize a coalition of local nonprofit organizations and community members to address food insecurity. Utilizing current research and involving potential stakeholders, the final blueprint will address the types of community gardens, feasibility, and educational opportunity. Okay, hello everyone. We will start by taking you back to the history. The Victory Gardens were an extension of the War Gardens, which were developed to reduce food shortages during World War I, since canned fruit, fruits and vegetables were rationed at that time. During World War II, Victory Gardens were promoted with a separate pamphlet, magazines, and newspaper published to encourage homegrown and community garden. Also, the U.S. government published recipe books with the tips for preparing vegetables and, produ and produce at home. Next, please. Food Will Win the War was the name of the campaign initiated by the head of agency, Harvard Hoover. In 1942, nearly 15 million families planted Victory Gardens while by 1944, an estimated 20 million victory gardens had about 8, 8 million tons of food. Next, please. Community gardens have a historical background in New York City, going back to the early 1970s. During 1990s, nearly 900 community gardens could be found in New York City. Between 1997 and 2000, there was a lot of action, both for and against community gardens. And in September to, uh, 20, uh, 2010, the agreement of new garden rules were revealed with identical wording to make sure that gardens have the best long-term preservation protection. And now with, with the next presenter, my colleague, Fanny. Thank you, Sarah. Westchester County has a population of almost 1 million people. In 2019, it was estimated that about 87,000 of those residents were living below the federal poverty level and one in five were facing food insecurity on a regular basis. According to Feeding Westchester, the COVID-19 pandemic caused the numbers of those they helped to double and they fed between 250 to 300,000 residents per month throughout 2020. We propose a solution to help address this need is a community garden. Next slide, please. In addition to contributing to the security of food supplies, community gardens have many benefits. They promote community connection, increase sustainability, contribute to psychological well being, promote eat healthier eating habits, contribute to a reduced carbon footprint, and result in healthier people, as studies have shown that those who grow fruits and vegetables consume more of them and have lower body mass indexes. Building a community garden will require an investment of land, time, labor, and resources, but the benefits to our community should far outweigh the cost. Community partner donations of labor and resources will be a key component to the garden's success, but should the county with, wish to minimize their financial outlay, there are many potential grants that can be applied for. We have identified a few grants that would be appropriate, appropriate funding sources for this garden, including the USDA NIFA grant, the Citizens Community Committee for New York City Neighborhoods Grant, and Seed Money, which is an organization that helps community gardens get funded through crowdfunding. Our next speaker is Stephanie. Thank you, Bonnie. The establishment of a community garden has many benefits to individuals in the community. Healthy People 2030, a framework established by the US Department of Health and Human Services, outlined over 20 public health objectives for Americans to improve human health and well being. Our community garden project aligns with the objectives of Human Healthy People 2030. The community garden, its focus and outcomes will help address and improve the following health conditions, reduce the risk of diabetes, cancer, foodborne illnesses, mental disorders, overweight, and obesity. 
It promotes mental health. Gardening promotes moderate to high intensity physical activity and increased contact with nature. Contact with nature prevents mental health issues and promotes well being. Health behavior. Community gardens help improve nutrition intake and encourage healthy eating. Populations. Community garden benefits all populations within the Westchester County. Last but not least, settings and systems. Community garden promotes environmental health and engage local community and schools. A community garden restores the environment, increases biodiversity, and creates a habitat for wildlife. Gardeners will enjoy a healthy natural environment. Our community garden plans to educate school children and all persons within the community and helps the community to promote healthy eating and also create networking opportunities within the community. Next slide, please. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals outlines 17 goals with 169 targets. All UN member states agreed to achieve the goals by 2030. There are four sustainable development goals that our community garden focuses on. Number two, zero hunger. Community gardens grow food locally. The garden will give away food to those who are most in need. This will end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition intake. Number three, good health and well being. Gardening promotes physical movement and well being of all ages. Community gardens welcome people of all ages, background, and cultures. By gardening as a group, it promotes social, spiritual, physical, and emotional well being. Number 11, sustainable cities and communities, producing and consuming produce that are grown locally help minimize supply chain, transportation distance, and makes the county more resilient and sustainable. Number 12, responsible consumption and production. A community garden promotes sustainable consumption and production patterns by eating seasonal, local produce. By consuming produce instead of animal products, it helps reduce the total consumption of meat protein. This will also help decrease carbon footprint, pollution, and water usage. The next presenter is Shanti. Thank you, Stephanie. Hello, everyone. I will be describing the various styles of community gardens and our recommendations to Westchester County. These gardens include the plot garden, a garden divided into separate plots that are managed by individuals, the cooperative garden, where members work as a team in one large garden, the youth garden, are for motivational and educational purposes. The entrepreneurial market garden is a garden where the produce is sold. The therapeutic garden provides horticulture therapy using plants to improve the social, educational, psychological, and physical well being. The demonstration garden is an experimental garden with a blend of different varieties and practices. Next slide, please. We propose a demonstration garden because it can provide multiple benefits to the Westchester community. Benefits such as donate food to the needy, demonstrate and teach gardening techniques to students and municipalities who would like to start a garden. Provide opportunities for active volunteers to participate and ideas for others to take to their community. This garden type will feature the interplantation of vegetables, fruit, herbs, and perennials to demonstrate plant synergies and techniques to integrate ornamentals with food crops to attract pollination. Thank you. Next speaker is Ramya Bota. Thank you, Shanti. Each garden is unique and many factors should be considered during the planting stage. The companion planting are just our suggestions as it is a great way to maximize the efficiency of the garden. Companion planting is a practice of growing different plants together. Certain combinations of plants make them more productive, often because some plants have complementary characteristics such as their nutrient requirements, growth habits, and pest dribbling abilities. There are plenty of good reasons to plant certain crops together, such as to deter pests, attract beneficials, shared regulation, natural supporters, improve plant health, 
improve soil fertility and weed separation. Next slide, please. A familiar example of companion planting is the three sisters trio, corn, climbing beans, and winter squash, which are commonly planted together by various uh, Native American communities due to uh, the plant complementary natures. The tall corn supports climbing beans, the low growing squash shades the ground to prevent moisture loss, and the big perky leaves uh, discourage weeds and pests. And the fast growing beans are nitrogen fixers, which makes the nitrogen available for the other plants. The next up is Garden Designs by Oswaldo. Thank you, Ramia. The class decided to develop a community garden blueprint in a modular style for the, uh, for the Westchester community that incorporated different types of gardens. This blueprint includes a demonstration module, a plot module, a raised bed module, and an educational and floral module. Our top process during the development of this blueprint was to provide the Westchester community with the ability to expand their garden based on the community reaction to the garden as well as their most logical and economical decision. We also kept in mind accessibility to individuals with wheelchairs and other disabilities. A recommendation to the community is to develop the demonstration module as it will represent an introduction to what the other modules have to offer. This module will provide the community with the different ways of gardens. This module includes the wood, mini, and wicker raised beds, plots, a greenhouse, and an area with pavers for easy access to individuals with disabilities, and an area for others to enjoy the flowers. The next presenter is Derek Hunt. Thank you, Osvaldo. Now we will discuss the feasibility of the proposed community garden site. Westchester County, County falls under the USDA Plan Hardiness Zone 7A. This means that the minimum winter temperature is zero to five degrees Fahrenheit. This helps us determine the types of plants that can thrive in our area. The mean annual precipitation for Westchester County is 36 to 71 inches, which is well above the national average. The mean annual air temperature is 39 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit with a frost-free period of 145 to 240 days. Next slide. Based on the soil survey retrieved from the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service, the soil that at the proposed garden site, U6 Oval South, which is located, are circled in green on the left of the screen, is Woodbridge loam 0 to 3% and 3 to 8% slopes. Woodbridge loam is prime farmland and is usually used for crop cultivation. Due to prime farmland's limited quantity and its physical and chemical characteristics for producing economically sustained high yields of crops, it is vital, vital to facilitate responsible use of the land, making the proposed site ideal for a community garden. Thanks to senior environmental chemist Matthew Orfis at Westchester County Department of Labs and Research, we were able to get soil samples analyzed for organic and inorganic material. Based on those results, there, were, there was no evidence of pesticide contamination uh, and the lead levels were also well below lead uh, levels of contamination. Next, Irene will be discussing finances. Thank you, Derek. I'm Irene Talia Farrell, and along with my partner, Amir, we were members of the cost team. Our responsibility was to establish the budget and procurement. We started out by researching the type of items that are common to any type of garden to start it up such as the land, soil analysis, preparing the land for planting, which involves compost, mulch, and fertilizer, tilling equipment, crops, either seeds or small plants, hand tools, water, and storage. Based on the blueprint that we received from the design team, we have cost estimates for four individual garden types listed in the blueprint. These costs include all necessary accessories. The demonstration garden, 16,000. The plot garden, 
5,000. The educational and floral garden, 7,500. And the raised bed garden, 32,000. For our project, we are proposing a total estimated budget of 35,000. Next, please. Some of the major costs in the demonstration garden were the eight by six plot. If you look to the bottom left, those four brown squares, the top two, the smallest two are the eight by six plots. So two of those would cost $680. Below those are two 10 by eight plots, which cost 1,368. Also five 10 by three raised beds, those are the light green ones. And also 10 by three raised beds made of wicker and rail. $200 for each of those. The total price for this demonstration model is $16,030. My partner, Amir, will describe the cost for the other three gardens. Amir? Thank you, Irene. I really appreciate it. So plot module, this would be our most affordable option. And it's really simple and it just includes uh, 15 eight by 10 plots. It also comes with a small portable shed uh, which contains some basic tools. And of course, uh, we included a deer fence for protection. Uh, so to summer, summary, the cost would be uh, soil purchase and transport as well as fence installation and materials with the total price just a little bit over uh, 5,000 as you can see. Uh, next please. So this is the education and floral model, which is, uh, you know, great for relaxing or even could be used for teaching. Uh, basic components are 10 by three flower raised beds. And you can see those in yellow. And there are six by four tables and you can see them in gray. Uh, there's also smaller raised beds, which are four by four and they are also in yellow. Uh, the beds are made out of wicker and in combination with the tables, they could provide a great location to have a class or just simply, you know, enjoy a lunch break. Uh, major, you know, major contribution to the cost of $7,427 would be lumber, soil, deer fence, and dimension tables. There are also some minor costs like seeds, tools, and fertilizers. Uh, next, please. So we call this one the raised bed module. And it's my personal pride and joy because it comes with a lot of accessories, uh, as you can see from the price tag. So it comes with 13 raised beds and they are 10 by three. And you can see those in bright green. Out of those 13, seven are wheelchair accessible and they're surrounded with pavers or could be surrounded with compressed gravel. Uh, which you can see in this brick red color. Uh, it has a tool shed, which is located in the upper right corner of the image in gray. Um, and it also comes with some basic tools. There's also uh, not one, not two, but three Riga type greenhouses and they come with the lifetime warranty. And you can see those in the center. Uh, other major expenses include solar panels which are sufficient enough to heat all the greenhouses and they can also control uh, automated ventilation system for all the greenhouses. Uh, there's also cost for soil, lumber, and this model of course comes with the, with the deer fence. Um, I think it's important to note that all costs for all gardens could be reduced by utilizing county's manpower and resources. So for instance, using county's trucks to transport soil or using county's workers to raise the fence could significantly decrease cost. Um, now I'll be turning over to my colleague Mehad and she'll tell you more about our partner organizations. Thank you, Amir. We understand that real progress comes through stronger partnerships and association with the partners, such as non-profit organizations university members, students, and volunteers to make the impossible possible. Therefore, here to make our project successful in the long term, we had to build relationships with them because it is an excellent way to leverage resources 
and access material and get tools, funding and volunteers and need technical assistance and some valuable information. Because of that, we had communicated with some nonprofit organizations for more help. Now Makash take over with the stuff needed for community garden. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we spoke with various community gardens regarding resources and staff needed to maintain the garden. We analyzed the staffing structures and have determined that a hybrid uh, staff structure is needed. The hybrid staff structure, which consists of two to three part-time or full-time employees and 10 or more volunteers. A fully staffed garden is highly recommended, but costly and would require uh, seven full-time and part-time employees and a minimum of 10 volunteers. The least favorable one would be the volunteer base, which consisted of one full-time or part-time garden supervisor uh, looking over, uh, over 12 or more volunteers. So we propose in, conje in conjunction with, conjunction with uh, Westchester County, uh, county employees assisting at Hill, Hilltop Hanover Farm can perform collateral duties between Hilltop Hanover and the newly developed community garden. The collateral duties can consist of being the site supervisor, an irrigation steward, treasurer, uh, membership coordinator, or shed steward. Uh, next, Wada will present. Thank you, Mukash. We reached out to various organizations to see their interest as partners in uh, our community garden and how they can help. Westchester Institute for Human Development. They provide education, comprehensive service and resources, social training and technical assistance for children with special needs and their families. Master Cornell Cooperative Extension, Westchester County. The mission of Cornell Cooperative Extension Master Gardener Volunteer Program is to extend research-based horticultural information to the community of Westchester County. The Native Planet Center of Westchester Community College, they educate people about the environmental necessity, economic va uh, value, and natural beauty of native planets in the Northeast. Next, please. Westpac Foundation. They have a leading force for progressive social change in Westchester County. They have cultivated an extensive and cooperative network of food justice advocate throughout the county to enhance the existing expertise within diverse communities for sustainable food with more access for fresh food. Children's Environmental Health Center, its objective is to treat teach and research the effects of environmental pollutants and toxicants on young children. Blasenthal Community Garden, the mission of Blasenthal Community Garden to provide fresh nutritious, nutritious uh, food to the hungry of uh, Westchester County by growing, by growing and uh, gathering healthy vegetables for local uh, food patterns. Mihad will tell us about how these organizations can help in our project. Thank you, Wadha. In this slide, we will know the three organizations, Master Corner Cooperative Extension, Westchester County, the Native Planet Center of Westchester Community College, and Children's Environmental Health Center may help us first offer to support education aspect, uh, second, provide the information about pollinators, and last, teach children about agriculture. Next, please. Uh, on the other hand, Westpac Foundation is supporting us with volunteer, volunteers and monetary donations. Uh, also, the last two organizations, Westchester Institute for Human Development and Pleasantville Community Garden, they are supporting us in any shortage in our community garden. Now, Milan will take. Uh, uh, now, Milan will talk about proposed uh, committee instruction. Thank you, Mehan. Uh, this community garden will need a committee of both paid and volunteer members to handle the day-to-day -day operations and management. Dependent on its size and demand, the committee can either scale up to accommodate the growing success or have the current committee members taking on multiple roles or duties. Next slide, please. The proposed paid roles will include a garden coordinator who will work with stakeholders to manage the garden as well as coordinate and secure 
cooperation of participants and project partners. They will provide continuity for the operation of the garden and prepare, prepare the garden for the next planting season. Additionally, the grounds leader will organize the work days to make sure that the paths, common areas, fences, compost, greenhouses, and other common resources are in order. The leader will compost, mulch, manage uh, the compost inventory and control weed and pests. They are also responsible for the inventory of the tool shed, the purchasing of tools as needed, and tracking the warranties. Next slide, please. This slide contains roles that can be either volunteer or pay based on the need and availability of funds, as well as the growth of the garden. The registrar is responsible for maintaining the waiting list, managing registration, taking calls from interested community members, updating administrative forms, processing renewals, and assigning plots. The communications and outreach facilitator is responsible for organizing meetings, taking phone calls, checking and responding to uh, mail and emails. The facilitator receives comments <clears throat> and, and answers questions and presents concerns and potential problems to the committee. The facilitator additionally coordinates publicity activities for the garden and helps create a welcoming atmosphere for new members. The treasurer collects garden fees, pays bills, authorizes spending, and manages any grants that the garden receives. The treasurer is also responsible for working with other, with other garden volunteers to create a budget and improving expenses. The safety and security leader will provide information on garden safety and accident avoidance, monitor the garden for safety hazards and address any concerns and ensures first aid materials are on hand. And lastly, the education leader will organize and publicize events at the garden and help facilitate continuing education opportunities. They will also set up educational workshops and connect new and experienced gardeners for mentoring and coordinating site visits. Next up is Stephanie to go over details about getting the word out within the community. Thank you, Mylan. The community and outreach facilitator can use a combination of social media, flyers, newsletters, and bulletin to effectively advertise the community garden. The facilitator can send digital flyers via listservs, post social media updates highlighting accomplishments, events, and activities. The facilitator can establish a community garden website so interested individuals can review the garden information. The facilitator can also send out a monthly email newsletters, including vegetables and fruits of the month, new members, helpful gardening tips, food preservation tips, recipes, and produce safety. Lastly, the coordinator can register the garden at a community garden directory, such as the directory on the Cornell website, this will help ensure interested part gardeners can easily find our garden over the internet. The next presenter is Narendra. Thank you, Stephanie. This section will start by discussing the recipients for the Grassland Community Garden. In order to promote this project, we reached out to a number of recipients. Three organizations that responded in our efforts to recruit recipients from our Grassland Community Garden were Lifting Westchester, Westchester Coalition Hungary, and Austining Food Panthers. These three organizations showed interest in receiving our produce in the future when this garden is completed. These three organizations are all nonprofit organizations that work with other organizations around the state and in communities in an effort to help individuals who desperately need it and are struggling to meet ends. Uh, next slide, please. Some of the criteria for individuals to receive these produce are low income elderly per persons, preferably over the age of 60, communities below the poverty level, malnourished infants and mothers, anyone under quarantine from COVID-19, the homeless, any household in a state of emergency. The next presenter will be Khalid. Thank you for this uh, valuable information. And in this slide, I'm gonna talk about distribution partners. There are several recipients to make this community garden successful. And this partnership plays an important role in terms of the support 
they provide for this community garden. Some of these resources are funding, supplies, access to volunteer, gardening, soil, educational opportunities, and income or vocational training opportunities for residents. They are perhaps have experience as well when it comes to providing like a came boot such as soil health, experts in gardening and information in growing food in a small zone. These organizations are Westchester Department of Agriculture and Market, City Harvest, Community Church, Salvation Army, Community Center, Senior Citizens are good example and they can contribute in development of this community garden in the future. And the next slide is presented by the speaker, Emmanuel. Thank you, Khaled. How would the recipient get the produce? Various receivers and stakeholders will be informed of the intent to donate. Upon their confirmation of acceptance and readiness to receive the produce, a scheduled date and time will be reached. Flyers can also be created to attract volunteers and their services can count as community service hours. The use of social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok can be employed to deliver the message. These communications will ensure the produce are delivered to the correct organization in a timely manner. The next speaker is Niha, who is going to talk about the educational connection of this project. Thank you, Emmanuel. So school gardens have a great potential to be an effective learning tool if incorporated in the, into the classroom. Along with the many benefits gardening can bring to students, the activity itself can help students better understand the process of learning. The classroom garden can serve as a starting point for a wide range of lessons in food security, food policy, pollution, waste management, healthcare, and medicine. After reaching out with faculty from different programs, we ended with the following list providing ideas on how to integrate gardening with the classroom curriculum. So next, next slide, please. So we have here the first course, which is environmental influences on human health. Community gardens could be discussed by connecting gardening with factors influencing food demand, extent, causes, health impact of hunger and approaches where community gardens could address and reduce all these problems. Next course will be healthcare in the United States. By providing lecture of community gardens, its rule, disparities, and how community gardens reduce food insecurity by growing food for disadvantaged populations. The third course will be ap applied practice experience and in initiations. Students may fulfill their APE objective by taking part in an expert of the community garden. Examples include help in maintaining the community garden during their APE three semesters or volunteering to provide elderly and disabled assistance and food distribution. Next slide, uh, next, next slide will be presented by Mohammed. Thank you, Nihal. The next course is uh, behavioral and social factors. Number one, healthy food, good habits. Community garden is one of the significant healthcare initiatives that need to be implemented to spread awareness of the good habit of eating healthy. Number two, urban landscapes. The flora of an area is integral for the ecosystem's stability, habitat, climatic stability. Urban landscapes have high levels of pollution, which can be reduced by the plants uh, available in the area. Number three, community garden and social issues. Hunger, neighborhood restorations, homelessness. In terms of hunger, plants are the primary source of food. A decrease in plant resources available 
availability would lead to issues, including a rise in food prices, starvation. Another significant aspect is that community gardens can provide food for the homeless people and encourage them to volunteer as well. The next slide will present by Abdurrahman. Thank you, Mohammed. I will explain the last part of the curriculum. Pollution and waste management. Composting is a natural process of recycling and decomposing the organic material into a specific nutrient rich of their chemical composting known as humus, which can increase soil fertility. Any waste food material that is organic can be used for composting. It is essential to fill a compost bin with the food waste, organic waste, and develop practical observation regarding the decomposing process leading to compost development. Next slide, please. Physical therapy, student community service project. Students can come together to map out what the involvement may look like setting up a community garden day and the planning activities that incorporate balance and moisture training. Speech language pathology. Articulation language and connection language therapy using descriptive activity about community garden could be implemented, which would help in demonstrate increment in communication, listening skill, and improving age appropriate pronunciation. A neutral program. Community garden can be promoted through the establishment of a practical understanding regarding the infrastructure development of a garden and the specific process that need to be implemented for maintaining sustainable flora. The next presenter is Tara. Thank you, Abdurrahman. In conclusion, before we end our presentation, our takeaway message is with sister community garden would offer many benefits. Having community garden would be an eco-friendly garden by reducing carbon footprint in the atmosphere, which is, which, which is one of the, uh, of the factors that contribute to climate changes. Following this uh, climate resilience way for sustainable pathway will result in carbon emission, uh, reduce the carbon emission pathway and having a clean air and healthy environment. Living in a New York metropolitan area where it's difficult to have uh, time for gardening and the backyards are unusual. A community garden can be a solution to help get, getting involved in the gardening practices and enjoy the time. According to the CDC, people who garden have lower body mass index than those who don't, which could be one of the advantages of gardens and gardening in terms of the diet and physical activity. Therefore, the level of obesity will reduce. Another opportunity we can get from community garden is education and learning skills. Next, please. At the end, we are hoping to share our project details with the ABHA 20, 2021 annual meeting conference this year. And now, on behalf of the Environment Cabis class, we would like to give a special thanks to the Worcester County staff, and specifically, Mr. David Kavinga, Mr. William Prady, and Dr. Anjali Soso. And thank you everyone for being a wonderful audience. Thank you. Nice job, folks. This is great. Thank you very much, Capstone class, for an informative and inspiring presentation. I think we can open uh, up the uh, uh, the meeting to questions now. Hey, Dr. Shikarji, can I ask a quick question? Yes, Dr. Yeah, Kittles. You know, um, I appreciate that graph that talked about the temperature and the moisture and all that stuff. Maybe you did discuss it. Maybe I just missed it. How's the soil in Westchester? Is it uh, more? Of a, is it a positive one? Because I've lived in places that the soil is just terrible to grow stuff. Would you like me to answer that, Dr. Shakarjan? Yes, Derek. All right, perfect. Um, so the the soil in our area is um, Woodbridge loam, zero to three percent, and as uh, Three to six percent, or three to eight percent slopes, uh, which is prime, are considered prime farmland, which is okay. like the most ideal uh, soil you can get. Um, and there's a very limited amount of prime soil left. Um, so, using this proposed site uh, that we looked at is, um, or it would be an ideal location for for community gardening. 
That's great. Okay, thank you. Again, hey, nice job, folks. I've got to get to the next one, but really impressive. So I'm going to skip off, uh, but we do have this recorded. We will make it available for everyone eventually.